So we're going to do a little um, exercise of texturing an eyeball without using any image maps. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One, um, the way we've already covered, which is by making connections in the attribute editor. I'm going to show you uh, another way which can be a lot more dynamic um, and, and effective if you can understand how to use it. It's called the hypershade. So we'll just start with um, the attribute editor method. Uh, I'm going to create a NURBS sphere just because it's uh, inherently smoother. There's no polygons. It's made of curves and approximations. You can do this same exercise with a polygon sphere. So anyway, I'm just going to drag a NURBS sphere into the viewport. Hitting 5 to go flat shade. And actually, I'm going to hit 6 and just turn textures on now. So there's my sphere. I'm going to give it a new material. So I'm going to go assign favorite blin and in the attribute editor bring up the blin shader so now I've got the blin shader open in the attribute editor I'm gonna assign a procedural texture to the color channel so click the checkerboard and I'm gonna assign a ramp texture so right now as you can see the ramp goes around the object like that way, clockwise, spinning on the y-axis. I'm going to change that, go back into the blim material. Actually, I better give it a name. Let's call it Eyeball Material 1. And just click the arrow to get into the ramp that we've assigned to the color channel. I'm just going to change the type of ramp from a V ramp to a U ramp. That changes the direction. Good. Next thing I'm going to do is add a color to the ramp. So I'm just going to click anywhere in the ramp color itself. I'm going to change these colors. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to make the first one white. Then we'll go black. Then we'll go white. And black. I'm going to use the sliders to place these colors a little bit. Uh, better and more effectively. I'll just turn my renderer on to high quality. Okay, so we're in high quality now. And textures are on. So I'm going to go with the object selected, black back into the ramp, and I'm going to start moving these around. I'm going to move that top one down to tighten the edge there. The next one up to about there, and the bottom one right up to there. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so now we've got this um, pretty crude looking eyeball with no color. Now I could drop into that ramp, I could drop a color straight into the iris. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna make a new c connection. So the color we're dealing with is this ring here, the iris, and that's the second white color there. So instead of just changing the color, I'm gonna actually add in a new connection. And I'm gonna add a fractal texture. It's looking a bit more like an eyeball. Um, and the fractals uh, popped up in my attribute editor. So I'm going to use these arrows to click back and forth through those attributes. And back to the ramp. Just checking the lineup of the ramp. I might tighten that eyeball a bit more. Well, too far. Actually, I like that. Okay. So now we want to go into the fractal, so you need to select that color and then click the arrow to get into the fractal. You can edit the um, look of the iris itself. And now I want to drop a color into the fractal. So I'm going to go to color balance, I'm going to go to color gain, and I'm going to change that to green, and I'm going to darken that out a bit. All right, let's do a quick render of that. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it'd be useful um, in a small char character at a distance. Wouldn't have to worry about image maps. All right, so that's the first way to do that. Just using the attribute editor to make connections and add new nodes. So this time, I'm gonna show you is this window here. Go window rendering editors, hypershade. I just created a shortcut so I'd get back to it. So this is the hypershade. Now the hypershade has all your textures in the top panel 
all your textures that you currently have in your Maya scene file, your materials. In the bottom panel, it's a work area. You can create textures in that work area. Now, if you've already got an object with a material on it, you can map that material into the work area automatically. And I'll show you how to do that. So select your object in the hyper shade. See this little button here? Graph materials on selected objects. Click it. That's my network. And these little lines are the connections between the nodes. So there's my fractal. So if I click that line and delete it, I've just lost the fractal from the texture. Now I can actually reassign that in the hypershade. So to do that, I just use middle mouse, drag from one node to another and release. And then it gives me a list of where I want to actually make the connection. It's going to have to bring up more to make that particular connection. It gives me another sub menu with more options. And I want to go into, I believe it's a second color in the ramp. So under color entry list, color entry list, one done so I've just made that connection in the hypershade as opposed to just in the attribute editor so now guys I'm just going to quickly start from scratch and create another eye texture for this object but I'm going to do it all in the hypershade so I'm going to open the hypershade And I'm going to clear my work area using this little eraser button. I'm going to start again. So what do I need? I need I need a blin. I need, actually no, I didn't use a file, but I did use a ramp texture. It's that one there. I also used a fractal. I believe that was it. So there's the blin, there's the ramp. So to connect the ramp to the color channel of the blin, I'm just going to middle mouse drag from the ramp to the blin and then select color. So now I'm going to edit my ramp in the attribute editor. Move these colors around a bit. Now anytime that, that object currently doesn't have the material assigned to it, but I can just middle mouse, click the blend material in the hypershade, middle mouse drag onto the object. I'm just going to go back to that ramp. Okay, so now we've got the blin with the ramp attached and the fractal's not doing anything. So I'm just going to fix up that fractal and I'm going to change the color gain to blue. Now I need to make the connection. So I'm just going to check my ramp and I believe it's color 2. So I'm going to middle mouse drag from the fractal to the ramp. I'm going to go more open my color entry list and try color, it was actually color one, which is the second color in the ramp. And there you go. Same process, different method. When your shaders start to get really complicated, this hy the Hypershade window is inv an invaluable tool for editing shaders. So now, going back to the Hypershade, I'm just going to click my window shortcut, select whatever object I've got in the scene and I can graph that and Maya will lay it out neatly. Also